The Just OK Mini 20 meter antenna just got even okayer because now Mike and Becky over at Ham Radio Duo are selling this as a kit. And that is just okay with me. Inside, we're gonna find a handy quick start guide here to help you get started once you've built this antenna. You've got a QR code to see how it's built, but we're gonna do that right now. We've also got this sticker that says, scan this to go to the build instructions, and then you get some shipping info. So let's take a look at what we got. We've got the coil here. We've got a little bag of parts. We've got our counterpoise wire. We've got our telescopic whip, a couple little 3D printed tools for tightening down our bolts, some magnet wire, and a Ham Radio Duo sticker. So as we open our bag of parts, we're gonna get a banana plug for our counterpoise. We're gonna have the banana plug socket with a lock washer and a nut. We're gonna have our BNC, it's gonna go there. And then we're gonna have a nut and a bolt that's gonna insert into the top there, as well as one of these um, heat insert threaded things that's gonna go on the bottom here so we can thread in a quarter 20 tripod for this. So we can start with our BNC. We can take off the nut and this little ground guy here. There's also a lock washer on there. We can go ahead and insert that into the mold for the coil and I want to keep that little cup kind of facing up. Next, we can put our little ground lug in there, and there's a little slot that this is going to fit into, so just you can just kind of tap it a little and it'll go in. Then we can put in our locking washer and tighten it down with our bolt, or our nut rather. We can use a little screwdriver to kind of get it started on the threads there. And then we can take one of the tools and go ahead and tighten that down. Just looking for finger tight, doesn't need to be too tight. Now we can install our counterpoise socket and notice these are not circles, these are actually keyed. There's a, a flat part on there. So we'll go ahead and insert that there, make sure that fits in. Then we can put our lock washer on and screw on the nut. Maybe use a small screwdriver there to get it started. And we can use this smaller tool to screw that all the way on. Again, finger tight, just like that. Next, we're gonna take this little bolt that comes with it. We wanna put a solder blob on there. This is what goes inside the top of this to make the connection for the radiating element. We wanna put a solder blob on here because we're gonna solder the magnet wire to this. And if we do this ahead of time, Theoretically, we won't need to put so much heat to uh, melt this 3D printed part. That's a good Asada blob. Now, once this is cooled, we can go ahead and insert it into the mount there. Just slides right in. Then we can take our other nut and screw it onto, oh, look at that, I got it first try. Screw it onto that bolt. Use a little flathead screwdriver to get her going. And then we can take this small tool here and tighten her all the way down. Again, just hand tighten is fine. Now go ahead and unwind your magnet wire because it is time to wind our coil. Now we're gonna feed this magnet wire through the small hole at the top there and we're gonna measure about two thirds of the way up uh, the top here. And we can kind of just give that a bend to hold it and start wrapping. And we're actually gonna go right in there and we're gonna keep turning, keep putting pressure on it. And this is actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. And we're gonna keep doing this until we get to seven notches up here. I'll show you once we get there. And I'm just putting pressure on the wire as I'm turning. And this is very, very easy actually, because they've got these grooves in here that the wire just naturally wants to fall into.
Now when we're getting close to the end, I'm gonna call this the back of it. We wanna measure up seven notches, not counting this tiny, tiny little one, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm at eight, nine, 10. So I need to go three more. One, two, and three. And then we're gonna go one more half turn around to what I'm calling the front. And then we're gonna kinda coil it down like that so we can put this in the hole. And I'm actually gonna cut off some of this excess wire to make it a little easier. Feed that magnet wire in the hole there. And we really want it kind of going down from there. So be mindful, kind of looking for something like that. And again, you can see as we come around to the front, we really want to start working this wire towards the back and down into that hole so we can solder it right to our BNC. I think I'm just going to cut this about halfway between the BNC and the ground. Get rid of some of that excess. And then I'm going to take a knife and just scrape off the enamel from the magnet wire so we can get a good solder connection. That should work. Then we'll just put a little bend in the wire and coax that into our BNC, just like that. And now we can solder it. And I forgot to hit record during soldering, but this is what it looks like after you've soldered it. And just as we did on the bottom, we're going to strip off the enamel from the top part. And your soldering iron should melt this off, but I always like to just be double safe and go ahead and strip it off to make sure we have a good electrical contact. And we can put a bend in this. We want this to kind of lay flat on the nut there that we pretend earlier. And we're gonna kind of coax this guy in there. Yeah, something like that should work. We'll go ahead and put another dab of flux on here. Tin my cleaned soldering iron. And hopefully, make a good solder connection without melting anything. That part is tricky and my solder skills are lacking, but while that's still warm, we want to screw the antenna on just finger tight so we make sure that that stays straight and we're going to set it straight up until it's properly cooled. Look, Mom, continuity. Now a couple other things we can do because these tools have holes in them and this uh, nut has a lock washer underneath it, we just want to make sure we tighten it down just to get that lock washer seated and again we can give a little bit of more pressure there just to make sure everything is nice and connected. Now we're going to install the heated insert and there's a little part of this that isn't grooved and that's going to fit just so perfectly in there to help us keep it centered. We want to keep this straight up and use our soldering iron to melt that into there. And I've never done this, so wish me luck. But we want to keep it as straight up as possible. We don't really want to put any pressure on it and just wait for the heat to do the job. And now it's slowly going in there. We're almost there. We're going to turn it upside down and just put some pressure on a flat surface to fully seat it in there. And theoretically, oh look at that, we've got a nice flush seal, or threaded insert rather. And don't worry, it does put a little tiny hole in the bottom that's totally okay. Now the last thing we have to do is connect the counterpoise wire to this banana plug. So we're actually going to remove this screw here and get rid of the outer cover. We don't need that. 
And we can fold this wire over a little bit so it's not poking us. And we're going to basically wrap the wire around this screw, maybe, kind of like that. So we put a little hole there. And we can get the screw just barely started in the banana plug. And this is kind of tricky. This actually took me a couple times to get this thread wrapped right. And we should be able to feed the wire in there, stick the screw through the hole we made in the wire, and screw that in. Just That's just to give the wire something to grab on, and then we're gonna flood that with solder. Just like that. Nice flooded cavity of solder. That wire's not going anywhere. And now your build is officially done. All you need is a tripod. Go ahead and screw that into the quarter 20. Go ahead and screw the whip in and add your counterpoise and you're ready to get on the air. So let's go out to the field and see how we did. So let's see how we did. We got the antenna set up here. We got the counterpoise going out that away, just fully uh, extended there. We'll give a sweep on our meter here and we can see we're just below where we want to be but I found that if we shorten this top section all the way down just the top one just the tip let's run that sweep again now we're 1.06 to 1 at 14.160 under 1.5 to 1 across the whole band if you do want to get a little bit lower, raise that up. Oh, maybe an inch and a half, two inches there. Get down to like the FT8 CW frequencies. You really shouldn't have to, but there you are right at the bottom of the band and you can tweak this however you like. So maybe we're just a little too long. Let's go about an inch there and we'll scan her again. Look at that, fantastic. And again, all the way down, scan it again pretty much smack dab in the middle of the 20 meter band. You gotta love that. Mike, Becky, thanks for sending this out to me. You've got a freaking okay antenna. <laughs> and uh, that's all we got for today. My name is Mike K and I'm RD. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube. We'll see you next time, 73.